Hey everyone, this is Steve with Keep Em Rolling. And just a quick video on a project I have recently finished. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who do not know, is a five gallon milk canister. These were used starting in roughly the 1920s up into the 1960s and 70s to transport milk from the dairy to the customer. This thing is solid. I mean, it is heavy, it is beefy. It's got these huge handles on it, really over-engineered. This right here, this, this is the top. It just pops off and then the milk will be poured inside of it. I found this at a military show and it was painted a horrible yellow color. If you go to my Instagram account, you can see um, like some pictures of it. And it had a seat on the top of it. And some of you may be asking yourselves, what in the world is going on with that? Well, back in the 1970s, we celebrated our bicentennial, 200 years, and there was this huge push for people to tie themselves to that colonial era. So people, they decorated their homes with colonial furniture or colonial style furniture. Uh, really, they viewed any antique as being, you know, quote, colonial, you know. Um, it was very kind of, I don't want to say quaint, more kitschy, I guess would be appropriate. Uh, genealogy became huge, people wanting to prove that they were related somehow to colonial fighters in the Revolutionary War and the like. So just this massive, massive push to get back to our roots, if you will. These right here were popular, popular, pop, uh, popular, wow, that was hard. These were popular with decorators. And what they would do is they would buy them, they were cheap, they would paint them, and they'd put seats on the top, and usually the seats were like foam wrapped in some sort of colonial style fabric, you know, like eagles or fife and drums or red, white, and blue or Betsy Ross flags. And they would put these up, and then they, you know, you'd buy four of them. And you could do it yourself, or sometimes they'd sell them. And you'd put them around a table, and you'd have this kind of quaint, you know, farm style, back to your roots type of look with these. So a lot of these were used up in that way. And then when that fad kind of went away, a lot of them were then eventually, you know, put out in the garage, forgotten about, uh, eventually scrapped, and so forth. And that's what's most likely happened to this one. Um, it wasn't uh, scrapped, but it was just kind of shunted aside in that. Uh, if you look down here, you can see on the bottom where it did sit probably out in a barn or someplace like that. Uh, it's kind of rusted and corroded on the bottom. Um, the bottom itself is good, the underside here. There are a few pin size holes, but nothing, nothing crazy. Now, looking at this, when I found it, as I said, it was a horrible yellow color. I brought it home. I, I knew that I could get that uh, foam off the top and I spent eh, a couple weeks putting stripper on it and returning it back to this. It took a lot of work. I used a caustic stripper, but I could scrub it and so forth. I used like a stiff, uh, I didn't use sandpaper or anything like that. I used like almost like a Brillo pad um, or a, a dish scrubby and I'd put the stripper on, let it sit. I would use a scraper to get off. It was just kind of a safe scraper. I didn't use anything that had a real sharp blade to it because I didn't want to ding the metal. Uh, so a, a dull scraper to get most of the crud off. I'd put another coat of stripper and then I'd use the scrubby, scrub it in. Uh, and then I would use another clean scrubby with water to kind of get it off and then I'd rinse it. And I just kept doing it over and over again. And eventually all that horrible yellow paint disappeared and got back to this really nice original finish. Now, why am I telling you about this on Keep Em Rolling? I'm telling you about this because when you turn this around and you look at the front here, look at this. U.S. Army Kiner Williams Stamping Company, 1935. Now, I haven't been able to find out what the army was doing. If this was something that, you know, the dairy would uh, produce the milk, put it in this, and then we'd be shipped to an army base. Who knows? This is, you know, pre-World War II. So were these going to, you know, kind of that uh, peacetime draft army? What, what, what's the story behind this? I don't know. You know, I really don't know. Um, but it's just, it's one of those pieces that it was too cool to pass up. I mean, I just, I was amazed. The price, um, I'll be honest with you, they wanted $60 for it. Um, I thought $60 was too much, and I was able to uh, dicker down to $40. I thought $40 was still too much, but, um, you know, I liked it too much to pass up. And I knew I could bring it back. You know, like I said, I worked on it quite a bit to get it down to this. But how cool is that what a strange and unusual piece. I've done some research 
and I have found out very little, to be honest with you. So if any of you uh, have any ideas, if you have any, uh, you know, sources, uh, let me know. I'd love to know exactly how these were used. Did the dairy, local, it's a Borden dairy. The top here does have uh, Bordens on it. So was there a local dairy that would ship to the U.S. Army? And the contract was, you know, you fill up the Army containers, they go to the Army base, and so forth and so on. Who knows? But... I will give you one more side. This is in my war room now. It is kind of a beefy piece. The cool thing is I could always put things inside of it if I wanted to, or even better, I use it as a seat. So if I have guests over, somebody can, you know, take, take a load off by sitting on this and it won't damage it, it won't destroy it, it actually will work really cool. It's just that I'm not gonna put any padding back on the top, but uh, it works great as a seat. So, well, that's my quick video about a pre-war U.S. Army milk can. I hope you've all enjoyed this, and, you know, let me know all the unusual stuff you guys find. I think that's the, the, the cool thing about this hobby is the weird stuff that does manifest. So, on that note, this has been Steve with another quick episode of Keep Em Rolling, reminding all of you out there to, well, you guessed it, keep them rolling.